so um, welcome to uh, this afternoon's um, webinar, um, all around uh, tools to support infrastructure on social investment. Fascinating topic this afternoon. Um, uh, my name is Mel Mills. I am a Senior Social Sector Engagement Director at Peter Society Capital. And joined today on uh, with the panel, we've got um, Tom Watson. Hello all, Tom Watson, Head of Business Development at NAVCAP. Lovely. And uh, to my left, um, Emily, and I'm Digital Marketing for Good Finance. All right, Liz Hayes, the Connect Fund Assistant Manager. Okay, great stuff. So um, what we're going to aim to do um, this afternoon in the webinar, um, we're going to give you a little bit of introduction and context about um, why we've got this webinar this afternoon. Um, we're going to hear a little bit from um, Liz in terms of a Connect Fund update. Um, some more definitely from Tom around uh, his experience around what NAVCA members want and why NAVCA are working in this space. Um, Emily's going to do some uh, live demo um, around some of the tools and explanation. Um, there's going to be some elements of the swapping screens and showing you different media, so um, please bear with us um, as we do that. Um, and we will always be looking to the chat, so um, if for some reason the tech's not working or you can't hear, please do feel free to see. We can, we can see your comments as they come up. There will be plenty of time um, for questions, so you can use the Q&A um, if you want to pose a question, and we'll come back to those certainly at the end. I'm going to do a little bit of an overview on um, other things that we're working on or things that you might have seen on Good Finance, um, and then we'll do a wrap-up at the end. Okay, so um, I'm going to just kick off with a little bit of context and background. For some of you, might have joined us on uh, a webinar uh, earlier in the year um, when we again collaborated with the Connect Fund and we, we went through all of the opportunities there were for us to work together um, and also lots of the things that the um, uh, projects that we're actually working on, some of the things that Good Finance was doing that would enable um, social enterprises and charities to uh, so I suppose build on the work that you were doing. So things like um, Let's Talk Good Finance, and it's great we've been able to do a number of those with you now. Um, but we started to talk about some of the things that were coming soon. It probably just seemed quite a long time ago that we said these things were coming yeah. soon, but now they're really here. Um, and that's in response to uh, lots and lots of interest. So we find that um, infrastructure organisations, and there's a very wide range to what I think we would constitute as an infrastructure organisation, from around the um, UK, getting in touch with us and um, with you and certainly with NAPCA to um, want to know more about um, how to become more sustainable, more resilient, how to think about enterprise and trading. And of course, when you think about all of those things, then you need to, at some stage, understand more about social investment. Um, we um, are a relatively small team. I think we're all pretty relatively yeah. small teams. And uh, we get more requests than we're able to service. Um, I've also been in the position where I've sat in presentations um, about social investment. And people have used um, slides or um, information that they found by doing the good old Google search, um, which can often be a great place to go for resources. I've also sat in a fair amount of presentations where I thought, hey, that's an incredibly complex slide, maybe designed for, say, a fund manager. Mm -hmm. And that's not in any way to say that social enterprises, charities, or voluntary community sector organisations aren't perfectly capable of understanding complex information. In fact, we, do, we all have to do that every day. But let's face it, working in this sort of world, and I say that as somebody who does, is, is not our day job. So often, um, the level of information that we're presented with maybe isn't isn't uh, presented in the right way. And one of the things that we've been trying to do is to try and help um, infrastructure organisations who want to talk to and service their members better so they can find out more about this to provide appropriate resources and tools. So um, I'm really pleased to say that um, we've done a certain amount of testing, we've got some really good feedback from, from uh, uh, people during our journey and one of the things we want to do this afternoon I suppose was rather than talk about that's theoretically to do some practical dinner. Um, so before we get on to that, let's um, hear from this and um, get a net fund update, what's been happening. Um, how do the things that we're going to talk about, I suppose, fit in? Yeah. 
So I'll keep it very brief in terms of um, the Connect Fund strategy. So our funding strategy is available um, on our website at the moment. And a lot of what um, this kind of third phase of the project is, is about embedding the learning from our previous grantees um, in the first two rounds that we funded um, as we work towards kind of uh, renewing our uh, relationship with access and how we develop that going forward. Um, so we've worked for the past kind of two and a bit years um, with a number of grantees, um, local in infrastructure organisations, um, intermediaries and other kind of st key stakeholders in the social investment uh, sector to develop resources and to look at um, how enterprise development can be rolled out and embed that learning around social investment um, in the sector. And uh, a lot of our grantees have produced resources and tools that we've shared on our website among other places. Um, but we've also been really keen during that time to not duplicate um, too much of what already exists in the market elsewhere, particularly on good finance. So that's why we've tried to collaborate quite a lot on that. And we're really pleased to have been able to support NAFCA um, and the work that Tom and his team are doing to um, expand the, the reach of good finance and also the learning from the Connect Fund to kind of really embed that more broadly with other NAFCA members who haven't been able to take part in the Connect Fund as of yet. Um, so these resources are a really good tool that we can kind of add to that bank of um, learning that our grantees have done and it also means that um, you can kind of adapt them and learn from them and use them in your own context which means that you have less work to do and there's less duplication in the market. So we're really um, excited to see what what um, what good finance have been developing and how they can work with um, the NACA members that um, are both Connect Fund grantees but also the broader membership. Lovely, thank you very much. So that um, segues very nicely into um, Tom, do you want to give um, everybody that's a part of the webinar, I suppose, where this fits in for NACA, um, what you've been doing for NACA members um, and what their interests are really? Hello. Um, so, yeah, so I suppose everything we try to do is is an attempt to make sure that um, this comes from our membership. As, as Liz said, um, you know, originally there were a whole group of NAVCA members who applied for the Connect Fund, and therefore we wanted to make sure that that was actually, um, we were sharing the learning from that. There were some other members who were having an interest in this, and then as, as with all NAVCA infrastructure members, there's a kind of spectrum of, of interest in this. Um, so we're, we're kind of making sure that we're following the members' lead and supporting them the best way we can. We find that NAVCA members are increasingly being asked questions or asked to support social enterprises or enterprising organisations, whether that be voluntary community groups or charities. And so understanding the intricacies or just having a, a, a who to talk to around social investment is, is really important. Um, there's always lots of really good things that come from having a network like NAVCA. Um, the, the peer learning that can come from that is, is huge. But we increasingly see that there's questions around, you know, community asset transfers, around um, how, how can we take a different approach to doing things. And that's for NAVCA members themselves, but also for the organisations that they're supporting. So... As we started to see more and more of this, we, we were kind of thinking we need to be there to work with partners like Good Finance and Connect Fund and other uh, social investors as well to, to try and bring that, um, their expertise into the NAVCO network so those resources can be shared, as Liz said, so there isn't duplication of, of, of things happening out there in the market. And so that, you know, in our, in our goal, every local infrastructure organization will um, have the skills and the resources to be able to know who to turn to, know who to signpost to, and be able to support um, organizations in their area better. Where, where this originally came from, one of the things was around not having um, organisations go to two different two different people to talk about um, grant funding and about social investment. It should there should be an opportunity to just talk about how to fund something, whether that be through grant funding, through contracts, through social investment. As Mel started to talk about, you know, the language that we all use across all the different areas we all work, you know, whether that be health, whether that be public sector, whether that then be around grant funding, 
social investment, language is hugely important and quite often puts a barrier to people engaging in things. So what we've attempted to do um, as part of this work is, you know, we, we brought um, 10 of our members together with the Good Finance team to test out some resources. What does this feel like to you? It feels right for the, the kind of social investment side of things. What does it feel like to lo local infrastructure? Does this sit right? How would you use it? We want to continue that, and, and this webinar is part of that co ongoing process to really test it. Does it work? Are you able to engage with it? Do you think small voluntary sector organisations will be able to engage with the resources that come out of this? So, so that's kind of where this has come from. I think it's great that the interest is growing. As we progress further, we just want to make sure that every, as I said, every local infrastructure organisation has access to information. We grow the knowledge within our, our network and grow those peer learning opportunities. And this is all part of that uh, process. So great to hear that there's so many on, on the call. Um, and hopefully this isn't echoing too much. I'm getting a bit of a feedback. So apologies if, if that sounded that on your side. That sound quality is good actually at our side. Yeah, we've got um, 30 people um, on the webinar at the moment. And just um, in case anybody has to leave or um, they wanted to attend, signed up and on, on, we are recording this, so we'll be able to share it afterwards. Um, I've also noticed, um, whilst well, we're not quite questioned yet, but um, in the chat, somebody's asked whether we will um, share all the documents that we're referring to in the webinar. And yes, we're actually going to. Not only we're we going to live demo them um, as we go through, but we're going to let you know where they are if they're already available. And for the very last piece, which is due out next week, if you are um, signed up to the webinar, we will drop you an email when they're live. Um, and also both Connect and Navica will come out and let you know as well as so this one final piece. So I think that gives us a really good context around um, uh, where the demand is coming from. Uh, how we're all working on little separate bits, but how we can actually collaborate and come together. Um, and so I love this point where I actually go to the technical experts, <laughs> to, my, to, to Emily, and say, okay, Emily, show us how this works. So um, for, for those of you that um, uh, know me, I'm with my, with my team, I'm, I love to have great ideas, um, but I rely on the people around me to try and make those work. And uh, Emily's great at bringing some of this stuff together. In fact, um, while Emily's getting these up to share the screen, um, I think originally I started talking about um, some slide decks and then uh, Emily spent just a little bit of time and went, oh, we could make this a tutorial. So, uh, no further ado, I'm going to hand over to Emily and she's going to talk to you about what's coming next. Okay, so, um, uh, as everybody said, we've been building the kind of infrastructure resources that are provided through the finance. So we're very excited to share that next week, hopefully this will be live, it's our whole page on the website dedicated to infrastructure bodies. So um, within there you'll find loads of tools and resources that you can download. So everybody asking, will you get these afterwards? Yep, you'll be able to get them on demand off the website. So I will talk you through this page. Um, the kind of main thing at this stage is to understand that it's still testing. So if you have feedback, where it says contact us, please do contact us and let us know because it's really useful if we build it. But um, basically it will help you present about social investment, about the finance. And so I'll just talk you through what we have here. So first of all, this is a presentation to all of the good finance events. And let's talk with finance, with finance live. We do a presentation. So we've decided to put this live so that you can download it and use it. Um, we have notes with it, but again, if you've got any questions, um, contact us and we can talk you through what to expect. So that'll be a downloadable file for you to use. Um, again, we've got tutorial video, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. And um, this will kind of complement the presentation. You can also use it instead of the presentation. It's a five minute video that you can circulate um, and use with um, anybody that you speak with who wants to know about social investment and good finance. Um, again, a testing stage, any feedback really welcome. Then we've got the full case study pack. So um, if you use the finance, you probably know that we do have lots of case studies, over 50 now. So instead of us just having them to ourselves, we want to make sure that you, you can all access it. Um, so within that, we've put all the case studies that we've ever had. We've uh, put them into four categories. So that's buying um, categories for buying an asset, maintaining cash flow, kickstarting your organization, and grow and innovate the organization. Um, but the case studies 
study pack is downloadable and editable. So if you decide that you don't want to use any of the case studies, you can change them, you can put your own case studies in that. Um, so it's kind of yours to use as you like. Um, but we'll get through to actually submitting case studies to add to it in a little moment. Um, on top of this, we also wanted to add some extra things that help organisations, especially organisations that can't afford a marketing team. So at Good Finance, we've been working to help social investors at this stage um, improve their digital marketing and their social media. So I'm now going to work with my team, which is Mel and Nishita, to make sure we collate the learnings so that infrastructure bodies can also use it. So this will be downloadable again. Um, and then we, there's a long-term plan as a community, so at the moment, just ignore that, that's TBC, um, but I will follow up on that. And again, contact us if you want to see anything added, or you want to see anything changed, or any suggestions, get in touch with us through there. So um, do ask us any questions throughout this, if you've got any questions about this page, but it will hopefully be live next week, and I will uh, be in touch with everybody that we've got the email for, from the sign-up. Um, but let's actually go through what to expect from the downloadable slides and the video. So what we'll do is we'll actually just start with the tutorial video. Um, this has been for a few stages of testing, so I'm, I'm, it can still change more. So if you've got any feedback, do get in touch. You can either write in the comments or when I send an email out after this, just get in contact with me and see how you think it could be changed or added or anything like that. So here is the video. I'm just going to... Let us know if you can't hear the sound when it comes on, but I yes. hope you can because yeah. we have changed. <laughs> yeah, so where is whoopsie daisy? Wrong one. Sorry, uh, team meetings. Where are we? Sorry, I'm just thinking you can get this good big screen. Okay, there we go. We'll go here. Sorry, everyone. New to, uh, new to Zoom. Um, next up, so what we do is we share the video first. Um, to make sure the video sound is right, I'm going to start playing it. Please let me know if there's any issues with it, but it should be absolutely fine. Um, you want to know um, Here it is. So. Um. Are you interested in earning your own income? Are you in? It is complicated trying to show, show different media forms. Sorry, everyone, with your moment, I'm just going to keep down there. Yeah, what? Anyway. Crash. There we go. Give us one second. Are you interested in earning your own income? Supporting your ongoing sustainability, building your financial resilience, and growing your impact and reach? If the answer is yes, then could social investment work for you? Against a background of decreasing resources and ever-increasing demand, social enterprises, charities and the voluntary community sector increasingly need to consider their resilience and sustainability, income generation and revenue models, and the funding and finance required to support their organisation. If this is part of your current thinking, then you need to have enough information to understand if repayable finance could be a tool to help you deliver the impact you want to create. So to start, what is social investment? You can watch the animation on our website or YouTube channel, Good Finance. Social investment sits alongside donations and grants as another tool that charities and social enterprises can use to help buy an asset, maintain cash flow, kickstart business or to grow. It's just another tool in your toolkit, which may be used alongside trading, donations, bank finance, contracts, payment by results, or other sources of finance and funding. Social investment exists to support and create impact by helping to build innovation, growth and sustainability. If you're new to social investment or it's something you could be interested in, here are some things to consider first. What do you need social investment for? Are you looking to buy an asset? Maintain cash flow? Kickstart your business? 
grow and innovate your organization? If your answer is yes to any of those, then the next question is, does your organization have an income stream with a surplus or profit? Remember, social investment is not free money. You'll need to pay it back. Some ideas for how you may have this income are government contracts, rental income, membership fees, donations, or trading. Also, you need to think about the social impact you'll create. Impact matters, so you need to be really clear about this. What difference will social investment make to your mission? And how will you know the impact has happened? The next thing to consider is who are you? At Good Finance, we did user research and identified three key profiles which we'll now tell you about. Ask yourself, do you identify you and your organisation as like one of these profiles? Grassroots, go-getter or business savvy? Grassroots, you're new to this game. You're driven by passion and operate on a small scale. You're passionate about making a change in your community. You're new to the world of social investment. Go-getter. Your social mission will always be your organisation's main driver, but as an organisation, you're learning to appreciate the commercial context that can sit around this. Everything you know about business and finance, you're learning from experience. Business savvy. You're motivated and experienced. You think long-term are considered in your approach. You have knowledge of investment and finance. It's time to think about where you start learning about social investment. Online resources are helpful if you want to go at your own pace. You like digital tools and resources. You want to be in control of how you find information and you're happy to read and research using different media. Offline resources are helpful if you want to know if it's relevant to you. You want to attend an event, you want to ask real people questions and you want to meet, speak to and hear from peers who've done it. Let's start with those of you who are grassroots. You may start your learning with our online animation we showed earlier and attending a Let's Talk Good Finance event local to you would be your offline resource. You can find the events listed on the Good Finance website and our social media pages. Once you've got the basics down, you may want to take advantage of our podcasts, the free online diagnostic tool which can help you decide if social investment could work for you, Now, once you've got all of this down, you know if it's right for you, you're bored or on board, and you've heard from others who've chosen investment, you'll hopefully be highly confident and feeling business savvy. At this point, you should check out our investors and advisors directory and sign up to Good Finance Live. However you decide to progress, we know how quickly things change. So even if you've decided that social investment isn't right for you now, we recommend the following actions. Know your market. Have you researched the market of your activities and do you know the competition? You can use our case studies page to search through other organisations using geography or social issue. Also, you could sign up to our free monthly newsletter. For more information about social investment and whether it could help your organisation, visit goodfinance.org.uk. Okay, so, um Thank you for watching that. As I say, um, at this stage, your feedback is really, really, really useful for us. So please do send anything through. Um, if you don't want to put it publicly through here, you'll have my email address and you're welcome to just send it through there. Um, any feedback is really welcome at this point. Probably worth saying we noticed at least one thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we hope there is one, um, one piece where the video footage doesn't match with the text at the end, so we'll, we'll fix that already. I think we must have watched it at least 100 times already. <laughs> but um, yeah, we had some great feedback, didn't we, from Vaughn and from some of the NAVCA members. So uh, but hopefully you will find it useful. Um, if there was anybody that um, couldn't hear it or see it again, we'll make sure that the file is available so it's yeah. accessible afterwards. Yeah. Um, okay, so moving on from that, let's look at the case studies, going back to, um, as we were on here, so going back to here, the full case study pack. So to use the case study pack, the best way to do this is to go to the Good Finance, let's just check if you can see that. I'll share this screen with you again, sorry, this is all the... Case studies, 
here we go. So, can I, whoop, move that up the screen, sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, can everybody see this? This is the case studies page we have on Good Finance. Um, it's just a screenshot of it, um, just to give you an idea. But within this, you have the filters. So you can filter um, location. I imagine on your screens right now, this will be really, really blurry. So please make sure if you haven't been on the Good Finance website, you have a look. Um, yourself to have a look at the tool, um, but you can filter by location, the amount invested, the social issue and the financial product offered, so whether that was SITR or an unsecured loan, and um, so you can narrow it down really closely to the kind of things you're looking for in your area, and then when you click on one of these case studies, so we have over 50 now, so hopefully there'll be some that suit what you want, um, you click on it, and within there it says download PDF, um, so when you, you can either download the PDF, and create a whole new case study pack, or you can go to what we have already made, which is the uh, the uh, resources for partners pack. Um, I'm going to share this again with you because I think we've. I'm glad you're doing this, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> so let's stop sharing that, and I'm going to show you this screen now. Um, lots and lots of screens, as we said, thank you for bearing mm -hmm. with us with this, but this is all the resources we're going to be putting up for you to download, so I hope you appreciate it. there's quite a lot there for you. Um, but yeah, you can see here that we've got the uh, resources for partners, so within this actually, we go down to the kind of presentation level, so you can understand the purpose, the context of social investments, we then look at um, the social challenge, um, just loads of information, basically a full presentation on social investment with notes, which you can have a look through and we'll send it to you so you can really take time to look at it. But then when it gets to the main point is that we have all the case studies here. So once you've used that filter on the website and you've chosen the case studies you want, you can either search for them and then go through and select them and get rid of the rest, or you could start a whole new fresh and just re-download those case studies and put them in. And um, again, I'll have some more information about this on the website, but the, we've got key statistics with them. Um, so for example here you can see how much they um, received, the turnover, how much investment, what type it was, the challenge, revenue and their impact. Um, but the thing is with this, this is a kind of cut down version of the full case study from the website. So you're also welcome to just print the full case study from the website page which will have more information. But if you want to update and change the case studies, this is the place to go for you. And if you want to present on it, this is all there. Every time we get a new case study through, we add it to this. So it's constantly changing and constantly evolving for you. And you're welcome to use it as long as you keep the Good Finance logo on there. Um, Mel, have you got anything else to add? So, yeah, so this came from the fact that, as I say, we often find resources out there that are maybe um, quite generic or they're perhaps developed for a different audience. So um, let me take an example. Let's say you are an organisation based in... Yorkshire, an infrastructure organisation, and you particularly want to run an event or you want to run um, a small meeting with people who are interested in, let's say, community assets. So it may be that you just want to pick case studies that are about community assets. Um, maybe you'd like them all to be from Yorkshire, or actually maybe you don't mind where they're from geographically because you'd like to be able to show what else is going on in the UK, but you do want them to be around a specific project, a uh, specific um, investment type. Uh, similarly, um, it might well be that actually you're doing this at a, a really introductory level, just about what social investment is. So of the full slide pack, there might be six or seven that we would say those are the core slides. Use the animation video, which is just about uh, just a minute and 26 seconds long, um, which helps to just context what social investment is. And they maybe just pick one case study, one relatable case study for each of the four ways that we say that social investment might be relevant. So that would be one to explain uh, context buying an asset, one for growth and innovation, um, one for um, a working capital, and what was the I'm struggling for my buying asset kickstart. Kickstart your organisation, <laughs> that's right. So. Um, because I often find that when you're saying to people, kickstart your organisation, well, what does that really mean? And I think when you're able to put up something like Second Shot Coffee, for example, it really brings that to life that, OK, this was a new start business that had a business model behind it. And this was one of the ways you could do it. So we're trying to give you, I suppose, all of the tools um, and as much knowledge as we've got but make it easily accessible for you so that you can make it tell your audience. Um, there is nothing worse than sitting presentations and thinking, well, obviously that was the best that they could get and there's a lot of that isn't relevant to me. 
Yeah. yeah. So, um, as I say, I'll go back to the main resources page um, so you can see how it all fits in again afterwards. But also, as I mentioned, if you want to add a case study to the website, we would love to feature it. So if you hear of any organisations that have received social investment, um, please do get in contact and I will send you over the form or you can submit it just here on the website. So if I just go on here and I'll just do a quick breakdown of this case study form. So it's on Google Forms so that we can hold it all in a back Excel document. So whilst uh, Google Forms isn't the prettiest platform to use, um, it's actually quite quick to use once you've got the information there. Um, it's just mainly tick boxes with a couple of sections where we ask you to kind of answer in a little bit more detail. Again, um, within this, we've also put a helpful document here so that you can kind of get an idea of what we'd like from the case study. Again, for yourselves, it's a really good way to kind of name drop your organisation, name drop the investor and really give the organisation some free marketing. So we've just given some tips on how to submit a case study. Um, and again, our tips on how to uh, create a case study will also be available in the social media tools section on the resources page. So um, that should hopefully all be there, which I will give a full breakdown of that page. Again, once it's made, I will resend all that information through to you. But hopefully that is information. Again, if you've got any uh, questions about that, do just get in contact with us or just comment here. And I think, yeah, so I'll just come back on the um, case study piece. Um, as well as, um, you know, we know that you um, have the conversations with, you know, you will find case studies that we will never know about. Um, it may well be we've done an assessment of all the case studies that we've got, and actually when we started Good Finance, there were a lot of case studies that um, actually cart back to the origination of big size capital, so they've been around for quite a long time, maybe they're not perfectly in our space, maybe they're sort of very large raises of like £20 million, whereas we know that the average appetite is around £75,000 for a social enterprise or charity, or even smaller. So um, when we did our audit, we found that we needed more, we wanted more female-led um, organisations to feature. We didn't have any from Cumbria, we didn't have any from the South East. So, you know, you're going to find these case studies. It may be that through the Connect Fund project or through Access Growth Fund, you've supported one of these. Um, yeah, this is a great way for you to share. And we know that it's been really interesting, this whole theme around trust, um, which I know, again, is another theme for the Connect Fund. Um, and we've been talking to NAFCA about it as well. You can have any amount of social investors, or I suppose even you know, people like us that do yeah. this as the day job. Um, and it always feels like a slight element of, well, you know, are they trying to sell me something? Is it, this is what they do for a day job. There is nothing better than peer experience and peer learning. Um, and a really good example of this, actually. So case studies come in more than PDF versions. Um, uh, recently, um, we went up to Manchester for Good Finance Live. Um, and Emily went back to Broughton Monastery and did um, uh, a video. It's a fantastic line in there from their chief executive who talks about um, how hard it was, how it wasn't easy, how grants was really useful alongside investment, and how actually investment in the longer term has transformed their organisation. But that's not an investor telling you it. It is yeah. the people who are running the organisation. Um, nothing more powerful. So, um, yeah, we want to hear from you. Um, Thanks for bearing with us as we swapped between all these different media um, forms. I'm just going to um, quickly come over uh, some other things that are coming up. So um, uh, one of the things that we did when we were working with um, Connect Fund, and I have to give a name check here to uh, Medway Voluntary Action. I need to see Stephanie on uh, earlier. Um, Steve and I were having some conversations and then Tom and I subsequently about how we actually take somebody who's got quite little knowledge about social investment yeah. and wants to know more. How do we give them enough information in a manageable chunk that's not overwhelming, that's above all interesting, mm -hmm. yeah, that can be a real challenge, um, and make it live, make it something that feels like you could take this out to your members. And so we created, um, with the support of Steve and, and some of um, the individuals they were working with as part of their Connect Fund project, we created something called Social Investment Unpicked, which at the moment is a day and a half, I suppose, training program. I'm not sure I'm going to call it training, but 
Um, it's definitely um, a sort of uh, action learning, I think is how I would describe it. Um, and we have a, a day of just getting to grips with what social investing is, what it isn't, um, hearing some videos and, and hearing that peer experience, inviting some other infrastructure organisations to be part of that conversation. So again, we could ask peers um, their uh, experience. Um, and we had such great feedback from that. We've actually run it three times. We've run it with Medway Voluntary Action. We've run it with NAFCA for NAFCA's team. And then we've run it with NAFCA's members. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we always do a little sense check between what participants feel their knowledge of social investment is at the beginning and then what they feel that it is at the end. Um, and on average, we more than double, um, which is, I think, um, good time well spent. Yeah. I would hate somebody to invest. Um, sort of six hours, seven hours of their time and come out feeling, well, I can't remember any of it, or it was well above my head, or actually I can't see how I would use that in my day job. Um, but the thing that's really good about it is that we've had more inquiries. And so what we want to try and now think about is how could we open up that learning to more people so that it could be done, for instance, um, remotely, online, distance, you could dip in when you wanted to. So we're in the process of trying to convert um, social investment on pit to we're never going to replace the face to face because we want to do that as well but we're going to our aim is by the first quarter next year to make that accessible as a remote learning um, program so that is coming as well so thanks very much to everybody that's helped us so far there's a really great quote actually from the last time we run it that um uh you know i think i will always remember and it is from um one of nafca's members um and they came saying that they thought they had you know, a fair knowledge of social investment, but what was really interesting at the end was not so much their beginning and after school, but how they came away saying, you've actually really changed my perspective on how we might use social investment and how we should be working with our members, uh, the organisations in their particular area, for them to really grasp um, what they needed to know. Um, so that they could really see whether this was a tool that they could use. Absolutely. So that, that was a, that was a yeah. really great outcome from, from that. Um, we also have uh, revamped our social impact pages. So um, for Good Finance, the impact pages are very popular. Um, we've actually had over 40,000 users of the Outcomes Matrix, um, which is one of the tools that helps you to think about what you might like to measure. Um, but if I'm honest, when we created Good Finance, it was probably was a, um, the last piece we got to, and there's a, uh, been a very old video on there that actually um, has um, set, access to any previous job. Um, and we really want to get down to the root of impact uh, measurement and what social investors would need, I suppose, rather than trying to um, tackle the whole generic issue around social impact measurement because we're, we're not experts. But we, again, we have um, collaborated with MPC following on the back of the impact management uh, program um, that was put together. And we now have a range of free tools and resources that go straight through to the Empire, uh, Inspiring Impact website, which came from Access's work. We've also commissioned uh, a new animation. So uh, alongside the animation, which explains what social investment is in one minute and 26 seconds, um, hopefully we're going to come up with one that explains what social impact for social investment is, um, and that will be coming soon in the autumn. Right? Yeah. Um, uh, lastly, if you haven't seen, um, and I suppose it depends on how much you've used good finance, we now um, have within our investor advisor directory a new functionality, which means that um, you not only find out about an investor, but you find out about the funds that they have. So I remember um, listening to something like Key Fund talk um, at um, previous Let's Talk with Finance, and they will talk about the type of investment that they do. And when they're talking to uh, a social enterprise or charity that's maybe looking to borrow money, it's their job to work out which of their investment funds might be most suited to the type of lending. But if you're not talking to somebody directly, how do you do that? Um, and originally, when we created Good Finance, we had some regulatory challenges about how we put funds that are live and open for you to be able to see. But we're really pleased to say that we got beyond that now. So this makes more or little difference, depending on who you are. If you are an investor for somebody like um, Kent Community Foundation, and perhaps you only have one investment fund, then it's relatively simple for a social enterprise or charity to go through Good Finance to see about Kent Community Foundation to click on them and then they're straight to their one fund. But what about if you go to Key Fund or Big Issue Invest, where there might be 10 or 11 different funds? 
when you do our profiling tool or use the filters on the um, investors and advisors directory, that, those are there to help you get to the information as quickly as possible. So we have all of our user testing tells us that's what you really, really want. However, when you do the profiling tool, it wasn't able to get you to the live funds previously, it only took you back to the home page. So I'm really pleased that functionality is up there and it is live. So again, it's about us listening to you as users and trying to work out how do we try and deliver that through um, good finance. So um, lots of ex more exciting things coming soon. Um, I'm pleased also to tell you that on the 29th of October, we will be running our third Good Finance Live in the Midlands. So um, we have a range of Let's Talk Good Finance, which um, are all about um, early stage, trying to find out what social investment is and if it's right for you. Um, but Good Finance Live is actually for those um, social enterprises and charities who are actively looking for investment. So if you come across organisations who would like to meet investors, um, don't want to trek around the country or come to London or um, have multiple meetings, we now have 16 different investors that are going to be available for social enterprises and charities to meet. Um, and so, and they tend to draw from quite a wide geography, actually, so they're regional, although we have had um, people traveling from one end of the country to another to come just because they, they want to meet some investors. So you can find out more about that on our website. We're going to come um, shortly to um, uh, questions and uh, suggestions and we'll, we'll click on the question function. But Tom, I just wondered if I could come back to you um, and just ask you to pick up about um, work with, uh, how we're going to be working with NAFCA around um, running um, some uh, Let's Talk with Finance with NAFCA members. And whilst I'm doing that with Tom, um, hopefully I'm going to encourage everybody to, if you've got questions um, from anything that we've said, to post them either in the chat or, but actually if you use, it, use the Q&A and then we'll, we'll see, you'll see that little icon um, along the bottom. So I can't believe no just got a question so far. Tom, can you, are you still there? Can you hear me? Come on in, Tom. Yeah. Tom, you're muted. Tom, just you're muted. Do you want to just send Tom a message? Yeah. Tom, can you hear us? I can hear you, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. So I just wondered if you would just pick up on the point around um, Let's Talk Good Finance and um, working with NAFCA members? Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry, my screen went a little bit funny there. Um, so as part of um, the work that Good Finance has been doing, they've done this Let's Talk Good Finance around the country. The, increasingly, there's um, infrastructure members who are interested in this space. And what we have done is, as uh, Mel said, we first went through the um, social investment on PICS with, with these organisations. Um, so we, 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 we worked with around 10 organisations so far and we're looking to take them through um, and support them to put on these Let's Talk Good Finance um, events with the support of Good Finance, but also with the support of um, Connect Funds to help make that possible. So as part of that, um, we will offer support as will Good Finance to help um, local infrastructure members um, organisations put on these Let's Talk Good Finance um, events in their local area for um, to kind of raise the awareness of social investment and enterprise, etc. Now, as part of that, each Good Finance has a, a, a brilliant pack which kind of takes you through every single step of the way. And there's a checklist which is extremely thorough and leads you through every single step that you need to put on one of these events. You will have support from NAVCA to um, help help make that happen. Um, you'll have support from Good Finance if you're looking for local social investors or local organisations on their here from a peer section, then we can help sort those. So we've got 10 organisations who are going through this process at the minute. What we want to make sure is that if you are interested, if you are a local infrastructure organisation who is interested in this space, and would like to put on one of these events, come and talk to us. You know, we can help put that on. Um, we can then provide you with some uh, funds to help make that happen. So that would be some funds to um, ha room hire, et cetera, to make the, the, the event happen. So it's around 500 pounds, which we'll put on the day. And basically your role is to facilitate 
bringing people to the event. The, the organizations in your local area, get them in the room. If they want to hear about social investment and, and the options that are available to them, if they want to hear from social investors, and if it, importantly, as Mel said before, if they want to hear from an organization who's been through this process and they can hear not the sales pitch from the, the social investor, but the, the, the warts and all, what it was like, how you went through it, the questions, all the things from an organization who has gone through this process. They've been through social investment. They're all in a room. Your local organizations can ask them questions, any question, get the right answers so that they can think, well, maybe social investment is really, or alternatively, maybe it's not right for me at the moment, but at least they know. So what I would say is at this point, if you're interested, drop me a line, drop Anna a line, um, and we will, you know, have a conversation with you, see, see if we can get one of these events on in your area. Um, aside from that, you know, we're always happy to, to help answer questions. If we don't know, we can probably find somebody who does know, knows a bit more than us. Thanks, John. And we've got some coming up in, what sort of areas have we got them coming up in? Um, so we've got some coming up in uh, Cheshire, we've got some coming up in uh, Gloucestershire, we've got some coming up in um, Derby, and all very special yeah, companies. Yeah, we've got, yeah, we've got a number. Yeah, you put me, on the, put me on the spot there, Mel, and I don't have the list in front of me. But. <laughs> you throw that, you throw that. You've got four out of the 11, which is very, really good so far. Um, and it's also worth saying that we've actually already done this for some of the Connect Fund yeah. um, applicants. So we've done one, um, we did one in Leicester yeah. with Val and with um, uh, Natasha. John from Case. Case, yeah. I'm going to ask him where those moments then. Um, and uh, we've also, there's a couple of people on the call that we've been talking about doing some of these um, with. Um, we've also done um, a separate event um, uh, with um, Sefton and Liverpool, um, uh, CBS around uh, trustees and some, some things we've done before, um, and we've also done some work with Medway. So, you know, um, we're working, I suppose, on, on, on both sides. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we've got some questions coming up now, which is really good. So we've got one from Steve. Are we planning a good violence live event in the South or South East? A really good question, Steve. So, um, the, our plan at the moment, so we're doing Midlands now, we've done Northeast, Northwest, Midlands. Um, our plan for next year potentially are Scotland and the Southwest. Um, we'd really like to do the Southeast and the East of England. There is a couple of things. Um, one, as it's a capacity thing that we can only do a couple a year and we're working our way around the country. But if I'm honest, there's also a little bit about maturity of the market and also having a willing partner that we can work with. Um, so, um, you know, what I would say is if you feel that your geography is ripe for this, then do get in contact and we'll, we'll start factoring that in. I think we probably think that the South East will probably get to for good finance in uh, early 2021, because we think we'll probably do those two next year, but there is always the option. Nothing is confirmed for next year yet. Um, what we usually do, and this is how the pattern sort of went in both the Northwest and the Northeast, is we did a range of Let's Talk Good Finance, yeah. sort of building up over a couple of years, um, never staying in one place. So, you know, um, in the North, East and Yorkshire and Humber, we've done um, a few, um, uh, I mean, different places, some in Newcastle, some in Middlesbrough, we've been to Leeds, we've been to York. And the idea is that along with the interest that your organisation is generating and the support from social investors, starts to give enough um, of a boost, I suppose, yeah. to the market to then make it worthwhile to bring good finance live. Because um, Good Finance Live um, relies on us getting um, sort of 75 organisations who are actively looking for social investment yeah. in the room. If anybody wants to know more about Good Finance Live, we always publish um, all of the findings from the people who attended um, and all of the findings from uh, the investors. So really interestingly, from the Northwest Good Finance Live, 
um, uh, of the investors who responded. I think we have 16 different investors there, and I think we have responses from 13 to the survey, and 85% of them had three or more active leads, and that means they met or spoke to three organisations who are really looking for money, and they'll go and talk to them more. Um, I actually already know of three deals that have happened as a result of having Good Finance Live, so. You know, it is a great opportunity if you can get to one, or you can recommend organisations to get to one. I went to the one in the northeast, and it was really a, u- a useful opportunity with all the investors in the room to answer those questions about early stage um, kind of ideas that you might have and who might be the best option. Okay. Um, so that's dealt with um, Steve's question. Do we have any more from anybody? Twenty-eight participants. Come on, you know, we're really, really good at questions. You can't let us off that easily. Just type them in at the bottom if you've got any. I reckon you're all having a cup of tea and biscuits then, is that right? Okay, we'll give you a um, couple more minutes. We'll just watch the Q&A and um, see if anybody else has got anything that they um, would like to answer. Um, I'm going to pose a question to you while you're um, thinking, which is, is there anything in the tools that we have um, presented that you that isn't there that we you would have expected to have seen? Um, because it'd be great to know is it something that we're working on um, or or not? Um, so that would be good to find out from you. And I, I'm also going to come back and talk to you a little bit about something which is probably a bit later for next year, but a couple of things that um, our user centre design told us that uh, might be useful. So we'll give you a little bit on um, a preview. Okay, so we have a few um, questions coming through now, which is good. So uh, Tim's asking us, any examples of how we can influence and inform local authorities and other commissioners about the modern social investment? Great question, Tim. Um, I actually find when we run the Let's Talk Good Finance, so I've got a really good example of this state in Wigan. Um, uh, which so we ran the first one in central Manchester, we ran the next one in Wigan, um, and uh, I've also one running Dudley. And actually, we got people from the local authority coming along to let's talk with finance. We have that in the northeast as well. So we've had people from economic development, we've had people from public health, we've had um, people from um, the local enterprise partnership growth hubs, um, and so I suppose they are using coming to let's talk with finance for exactly the same reason as a social enterprise or charity would. We did actually mute doing a Let's Talk Good Finance specifically for um, commissioners and local um, authority um, individuals. We would be up for that. Um, I think we'd have to be, have some idea about um, the audience, and making sure there's enough people. Um, but yeah, you know, def- definitely something that we we would consider doing. Um, Penny's asking us. Many of the organisations deal with are small charities who are anxious that they might not be able to pay the finance back, but they couldn't afford it. Can you comment? Oh yeah, I'm I'm happy to comment. (laughs) So a couple of different things. First of all, an investor, a social investor, won't lend an organization the money unless they think they can repay it. And they will have gone through the business plan with them and they will not only have done that, it won't be just on the best case upside scenario, they will have done something we call stress testing in due diligence, which is basically saying the same sort of questions you and I ask ourselves. What if, if 80% of our income comes from one contract mm. and we've been seeing a 5% decrease year after year, what happens if suddenly it gets cut by 50%? At what point can we no longer service that loan? So I think getting comfortable with the fact that social investors are not unscrupulous, it's this trust piece. Yeah. and that they won't lend you the money. The last thing a social investor wants to do is to make a social enterprise or charity no longer yeah. there to be able to help their beneficiary group. So there is something you get about um, trying to find and meet the right investor, the one that understands where your income comes from and will help you work through this. But something that um, people tell us all the time at Let's Talk with Finance is that what they get from a social investor is a lot more than money. So it's about the time and uh, the passion, same level of passion and understanding of their organisation. It's also worth saying that not all social investors are equal. Yeah. So they do different things, they lend in different spaces. So finding the right investor for you is key. There's also a piece about risk appetite, and this is particularly something uh, around boards, and again, something we, we spent a lot of time on, we get informed social investment for boards. 
often it's just about how you view risk. So you might have boards that are maybe faced in the fact that yes, they could have 80% of their income disappear if a contract goes, but they perhaps then think about taking on debt in the same way, um, and uh, or perhaps don't think of it in the same way. So we've got some really good peer examples. Um, we have got some free videos, um, which are all from trustees, chairs, um, treasurers, social enterprise of charities who have taken on investment. We also have a really good blog from somebody who took on investment and it went wrong, it failed, um, telling their stories. They have had well over 2,000 views so far. You can show them to your boards during the board meeting, offline. We'll make sure that those are circulated to you. So there's definitely something about hearing um, somebody else's story. And then there's also what happens when it goes wrong. It's being honest about the fact that there are some things you can do to mitigate risk. You know, things like uh, tra uh, trading subsidiaries within a group structure and keeping the risk there. Um, that's one of um, the things that the case study from Praxis talks about when their um, uh, uh, organization, the trading organization failed. What was really interesting in their lesson was that it wasn't about the social investment that had necessarily made the organization fail. They put it down to actually being overconfident that they had the internal skills to do the selling and the sales. who are, um, have borrowed money and are doing that thing successfully. I think probably because they've tested and yeah. um, tried the, the model. Um, there's a couple of, um, we have one up there. Jessica mentioned feedback about, you've had about a mixed funding economy, which worked best, i.e. grants and finance. Are there any resources specifically about how to manage this mixed economy approach? Um, the best place I suppose to go is in the learning we've had from the growth fund, um, which is um, what we would call blended finance, so part grant and part loan. Um, there are some really good examples in um, the Gorton Monastery, and actually we've got quite a few, I'm not sure you've seen them in the case studies, you might need to come and talk to us about how sometimes quite small amounts of repayable finance, so that social investment, can help to leverage larger amounts of grants because often, um, uh, a grant funder has get some comfort from the fact that due diligence has been done by social investors, so there seems to be a solid business plan behind this. But there's definitely um, some of the best learning I think will come out of um, the Access Foundation Growth Fund. So if you go onto the Access Foundation website um, and or search Growth Fund, um, you can have a look up there. Um, you can either see the generic sort of feedback, or you can talk to any one of the Growth Fund providers yeah. um, about how they might do that. Um, is all social investment loan finance or can it be equity assuming you have the appropriate business model? Anybody, I'm happy to answer, but anybody else want to say you've been listening to me all the time? Um, I, yeah, the main thing is I think it's uh, kind of the business model, isn't it? Um, you could, if your organisation doesn't have equity, you can't give equity, but if your organisation does have equity, um, you can do that. We've actually got a document on the Good Finance website, which is all the legal structures um, and the different types of investment they can take on. So first things first is the, is it right for us at all? You can just get organisations to fill that in and within three minutes it'll tell them the types of social investment they could have. But if they, if they can have equity and they can give equity in the type of organisation they have, it's their legal structure, then uh, equity can be an option. Um, some social investors will be happy to do that. Absolutely. So you have... Um, Community interest companies limited by share, you have um, community benefit societies, um, you have a range of those, and, and this document that um, Emily was referring to, that some good finance, helps you to understand that. So yes, you can give away, um, uh, you can get equity investment shares, you can also get something we call quasi equity. So that's for organisations who don't have shares, um, don't have a governance model that do that, but it acts a bit like equity-based investment, so it's longer term investment. Um, often has a profit um, sharing relationship. So what you get with equity is the upside. So if an organisation does really, really well, you go in at the bottom, your shares mount. You know, we're talking about sort of examples from Dragon's Den here. Quasi equity does the same thing, but you don't have shares. But what you do do is if 
um, the business really takes off and there's upside you can share as an investor uh, in some of that upside. There are some good examples um, of that. It's actually, again, another report that was commissioned by the Access Foundation that will give you um, some examples of, of crazy equity and you can find out more about that product type on Good Finance as well. Um, how much longer will the REACH fund be available that can help organisations prepare for social investment? And are there other grants that will help? Good question. How long will the REACH fund be available? I'm absolutely, I'm not, I can't even give you a definitive no, answer sorry. to, but because we can't, and they're just outside, we will get the answer and we'll share it as part of the follow up for this. Yeah. Um, I know that the um, growth fund is, is um, almost all. Well, Kind of committed at the moment. Absolutely, definitely. Um, but I think at the moment, Access is still deciding about how the, what the lifespan of the Reach Fund is and, and how that will align with the Growth Fund um, kind of wind down um, in a few years' time. So, um, yeah, it might be a watch this space on Reach Fund, but certainly still available at the moment. So, in case anybody doesn't know, Reach um, Fund is um, a grant fund that you can apply to. However, it has to come through um, a social investor. You have to get a social investor effectively to be your sponsor or supporter, and it can pay for specific pieces of work um, to um, help you to get ready to take investment on. Um, and so it could be sort of marketing or cash flow, getting your accounts um, in place. Also worth saying that um, the Enterprise Development Grant um, scheme is closed currently, but there'll be more news on that coming up in the autumn. So that would be an alternative, Steve, that you could potentially use if you happen to be in the particular issue area that they're going to focus on. And the other big piece of work that we continue to do is to work with trusts and foundations around sort of what we would call Grants Plus. Um, out increasingly, we're trying to encourage trusts and foundations who have grant funding to work alongside social investors or trusts and foundations who make social investment to try and bring all of the right resources um, together. Um, just to add to that as well, I just noticed uh, Dave's comment about the new tools about having the type of funds, as you can see, the type of funds investors have. And actually, just following on from the REACH Fund, and if there are any grants that will help, you can search by product type on the Investors and Advisors page, which is already on the website. And within that, you can select blended, and you can see who's got a live fund within that category at the moment. Um, we've got over 80 investors and advisors listed, so we can't probably be easy if you have a look um, in, in your own time. But yeah, there's the, the, the tool already set up there will hopefully help you search all those different product types and understand who's currently offering what. Okay, uh, so thanks for that Dave, that's good. I think we're, that does I think on uh, any other questions? Thank you, I knew, I knew we were all going to be that quiet by the time we get to this piece which is really good. So I think we're um, just about at um, round up now. Um, uh, we're, I think we're finished by saying uh, please give us feedback um, on the tools. We'll make sure that the things that we've mentioned today, including trying to find out sort of a, more of an update around reach, uh, sharing uh, the tutorial for you once we've done that one fix, and also emailing everybody once um, the new section of the website is live next week. Um, if there were any things that you thought should be there, then uh, do let us know. You can find out more about um, attending Good Finance Live. And I suppose the other two things that um, we hope that you will find exciting, so this is sort of a, a bit of a a uh, taster for what might be coming next is things we're working on for good finance longer on, with a lot of longer time scale are one having a um, well we want we don't want to call it a chat spot because um, it's not really a chat to a real person. Emily is real, by the way, she's not it's not mm -hmm. high, she really is real. <laughs> but um, we want to find an even better way for you for organizations to be able to use good finance to ask it questions so that you can get to the right place on the website. So we're, we're doing some work around that. Um, and also um, we are following up on continued suggestions we have where social enterprises and charities tell us that they would like to shift the power dynamic. And what that means is instead of um, having to go to social investors and say, I want to borrow £100,000 to buy a building, what they'd like to be able to do is to post details about what they're looking for and have social investors come to them. So we call it a reverse market platform, um, and uh, it's been high on our radar, comes up through all the user testing. Um, it's tricky, 
Um, there are a lot of regulatory issues that we've got to get um, beyond. Um, but um, yeah, we, we're going to have a crack at that. So we'll definitely be out there asking for volunteers um, to give us your thoughts and feedbacks. As always, we, um, we value them. I think other than that, um, I think I'm just going to say thank you very much to Liz for coming in. Thanks to Tom on the phone. We got you live and clear um, eventually. Thank you very much to Emily for doing all the hard work around the tech. Some good job that wasn't done today. Um, and we've enjoyed talking to you. And uh, we'll make sure you know when the recording is available. Thanks very much. <laughs>